Hey, everybody, and welcome. This week, we're talking to Aaron Frost. Hey, everybody. Yeah, you all know Aaron. He, you know, he's on JavaScript Jabber, uh, Adventures in Angular. Um, we probably had you on other stuff. I jabber. I've jabbered. I've adventured. Yeah. I don't think I've reacted or viewed, but uh, not, not on the podcast anyways. So. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by Sentry.io. Recently, I came across a great tool for tracking and monitoring problems in my apps. Then I asked them if they wanted to sponsor the show and allow me to share my experience with you. Sentry provides a terrific interface for keeping track of what's going on with my app. It also tracks releases so I can tell if what I deployed makes things better or worse. They give full stack traces and as much information as possible about the situation when the error occurred to help you track down the errors. Plus, one thing I love, you can customize the context provided by Sentry. So, if you're looking for specific information about the request, you can provide it. It automatically scrubs passwords and secure information, and you can customize the scrubbing as well. Finally, it has a user feedback system built in that you can use to get information from your users. Oh, and I also love that they support open source to the point where they actually open source Sentry if you want to self-host it. Use the code devchat at sentry.io to get two months free on Sentry's small plan. That's code devchat at sentry.io. So yeah, so uh, anyway, we were talking the other day about um, observables and um, a conference that you're putting on, RxJS Live, and I'm like, people got to know about this, man. Yeah, um, it's so exciting stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, a lot of my favorite people are going to be at RxJS Live. They're, they're yeah. kind of people who are doing a lot of the, the plumbing for a lot of the stuff that's going on in the web. Uh, yeah. I, I see more and more stuff adopting RxJS yeah. and observables. And so I'm like, oh, man, if, if people really want to level up on JavaScript and be able to do some really powerful stuff with some really powerful and, you know, in some cases, fairly simple utilities. I mean, this, this is stuff they got to learn. So. Yeah, totally. Like, um, observables are huge and like, let's say you're a programmer and you, you like your framework, you know, whether it's a, either react, you spell, you know, whatever it is. Yep. And you're like really good at it. And you're like, man, I've mastered it. My next, my next thing I got to conquer is another framework or something. I don't know. If you take RxJS and put it into your existing dev style, mm -hmm. you get to re-fall in love with everything you already know. Because like, uh, RxJS changes your paradigms, and it allows you to take what you already thought you were doing well and make it even better. Rx, there's just stream-based programming. It's so phenomenal, and the amount of code that it cuts out of your code is really, really nice. So, yep. so yeah. I think, I think if you're looking to become one of those you know, next level developers, the paramount skill that I think those next level developers have is mastering stream-based programming. Uh -huh. And the most powerful way to do that right now is RxJS or observables, right? That's the, that's kind of the, the way to observables. So. Yeah, it's, it's interesting when I talk to people, let's say about React or Vue or Angular, um, I mean, understanding the framework gets you so far, you know, you get a certain level uh -huh. of payoff, right? Yeah, And from there, once you start to learn some of the underlying structures around how JavaScript works and things like that, you, you level up a little bit more, right? Because now it's yeah. like, okay, I can kind of, um, I can kind of drill underneath a little bit and, and get there. And yeah. RxJS is another one of those things where it's like, oh, I needed this kind of thing. It's not really something that the framework necessarily gives me a nice wrapper around. Yeah. And so RxJS is just one of those tools where it's like, you know what? I've got a whole set of values coming in. I might have more values coming in in the future. So I just plug it into this observable and then I, I can do whatever I need to with that stream. Oh, I got another one. I'm going to put it through the assembly line and, you know, and everything happens the way that it's supposed to. And, and that's, that's the kicker, right? Is yeah, totally. Data management, which is the headache in a lot of these things, mm -hmm. gets super simple. And more than data management, it is data management, but there's a subset of data management, which is sh sharing data. Yeah. If, if you're not sharing, data management is actually pretty easy. I'm not going to lie. As long as you have like a, a singleton service where you can put the data and like a fetch to get it. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard, but once two or N people care about that piece of data, and that piece of data may update. Well, now you're in a you're in a nightmare scenario because, you know, if two people, if three people take the same 
same <laughs> object, and now that new now there's a new version of that object. Yep. Only one, only only the place that got the new version knows. The other two places are still pointing to the old one. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So you need a very elegant event-based way around that. Redux is elegant. Rx is like you know a Redux approach where you you've got these events flying around, but it's like imagine Redux with none of the crazy file system vomit that you have to do for Redux. You know, yep. and Redux still plays it a part, but um, Rx just makes it a lot easier to get into that kind of a scenario without having to adopt a, a Redux infrastructure. You know, does that make sense? Yep, that makes sense. The other, the other thing that's interesting about it to me is that um, at every place in the chain in your observables, so let's say you, you make a couple of transformations as part of, you know, because I this, this widget or this uh, component only cares about, you know, the names of the people. And this these components over here care about the email addresses for, you know, and you have a list of people. Yeah. Um, you you kind of get, you can get as far down the chain as you need to. And then you can just split the stream. You yeah. Know? So you have one that pulls the name off and the other one pulls the email off and yeah. off you go. And, and it's all, it's all observables all the way up and down the chain. And so you can take advantage of work that's being done anyway. And yeah. make it all work. And anyway, I, I, I could talk about this for hours because I just think it's it's super cool. So here's here's when people I mean Chuck, think back to when you were learning observables like the first time and you're hearing about them, right? Yeah. And everyone was saying what you're saying. They're great. Oh my gosh, I love the thing that they do. Yeah. And and, and you're sitting there going, I don't even know what it is. Yeah. What are you talking about? Like you just keep saying this five syllable word, but I don't even know what it is. Yep. And um, it has a bit of an overhead. So if I could take a second and peel it back, do you care if I try and take it down on the level to kind of explain where they are? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I think that most of the listeners to Jazz Jabber are going to understand promises. Don't you think that's a fair assumption? Yeah, and in fact, when I started hearing about observables, um, the way that they were initially pitched to me, I was like, I have promises. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. And, and, and I, so I, I could even to go back further that I remember when I had callbacks and someone, <laughs> and someone was like, Oh, promises. And they're explaining to me promises. And I was like, why would I want that? I already have promise. I already had callbacks and it didn't make sense to me. Yeah. And then I tried it and like quickly, and I hadn't even gotten into chaining yet, but quickly I was like, all right, you're right. This is far more superior than callbacks. Well, it's just easier to, I mean, the, the thing with promises from callbacks was it, it was just easier to follow what was going on. I mean, yeah. let alone, you know, the, the callbacks from the callbacks from the callbacks and all the other problems that you had there, yeah. the promises yeah. solved. I could yeah. read the promises and go, oh, I know what's going on here. Yeah. And, and the same with, uh, and the promises, once you got into chaining, it gave you this very powerful yeah. way to, to compose asynchronous flows right yep. and it was like hello callbacks could never do this this is amazing they could do it but not nearly as elegantly or as simply as as promises and as resistant to memory leaks that promises can because callbacks were just really really prone to leaks to memory leaks anyway um and so and i got over that hump and i was like oh promises mm, i love you oh how did i live without you i just want to put you on all my code and I got to observables, the same as you, man. I was just like, you're describing what I use promises for. Yeah. <laughs> you're crazy. And then the other thing that people would do would be like, oi. And I'm like, I'm listening. And they're like, what does an array of numbers and click events have in common? And in my mind, I'm like, nothing. Yep. They're, in, they're in arrays. Like, they don't have anything in common. But that was how people were trying to teach me observables. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. It's like, stop teaching it that way. Yeah. The other issue was people kept coming and saying, well, it's reactive programming, bro. Reactive programming. Yeah. It's, it's awesome, reactive programming. And I'm like, what is that? I hope it works, man. Yeah. I, I've, been, I've been writing apps for 10, 10 years. Why do I, what's, what is this? What are you? So yeah, yeah like I, 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 the resistance people feel to learning it, I felt it. And so I'm not, if anyone listens to this bonus episode, it's like, uh, eject, get me out of here. I got, I kind of respect that on a certain level because I felt it, you know? 
Yeah, I, I think we were all there. Yeah, but I will say, once I learned it, I got to be honest, it's my favorite technology I've learned probably in the last decade. Like, you know, I, I remember learning Backbone, and I remember jQuery changed my life. Like, holy wow. That, oh, yeah. That would change my life. And then Backbone changed a little bit, and AngularJS changes a ton, and then Angular, React, and Vue changes even more, and Node, don't even give me a start on Node, TypeScript. But of all of those, the thing that most changed how I code is RxJS. And I love the inversion of logic, and I love the flow of data when you put it into streams. And so, um, and so the thing about promises, because people are like, I'm resisting. I like promises. Promises for life. I'll die on this hill. And they're like pick, clicking stop on the podcast, right? And I get it. But observables, a promise is like a single use, right? Callbacks were superior to promises in that aspect in that you could call a callback as many times as you wanted to. And that was both good and bad. That was also the bad of callbacks, right? But with observables, um, you're expecting to get more than one data usually. So Chuck, let's talk through an app where the app has a current logged in user object, right? Right. And let's say they're currently, that value is null. So you've got 10 parts of the app that all want to know that the current person logged in is null, right? Yep. And um, some places don't want null. They want that flipped into a Boolean, meaning is logged in false, right? Yep. So um, a bunch of people call to some service and get a pointer to null, right? And then let's say the person logs in. How do you tell all 10 places that there's someone logged in now, right? You need some sort of a publication system that can publish to everybody and say, hello. There's a new user. And so if you're doing this without observables, you have heartbeats or you build your own pub sub model, right? Yep. And you have this system, you build a system that can send events and everyone subscribes to those events and gets the data out of those events, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Rx is simply that on a very simple level, but crazy efficient. Um, and Rx allows you to, when you get in your data, rather than point to an object, you don't point to the object anymore. You subscribe to the object. Right. That makes sense? So you're not just like point to this value on this singleton. You're actually subscribing to a value and you're going to get your subscribe function called every single time that, that there's a new value coming out of this observable. So when the person logs in, you just say, all right, now it's not null, now it's actually an object, right? And then yeah. every, at all 10 places that were subscribed, they all got broadcast that message. They were all subscribed to it, right? And yeah. so then your code reacts to that publication through the subscription. Like they subscribe and they, they react through the subscription. And then so you can time the user out and all 10 places will then get the new timed out user, which should be back to null, right? And you don't have to worry about 10 places pointing it old stale versions of the user because if you code to get it through the subscription stream then when null comes out the stream your code should react accordingly so um it's yeah, a, as, a, as opposed to function or promises where you would essentially it's not a subscribable thing so what yeah. happens is you set up a promise that says um you know go get go get a new login event and then it waits around yeah. and then when the login event comes back then it has to set up another promise that says, okay, now go wait for a logout event. Yeah. And then react to that. And so you have to remember to set it up for every instance. In yeah. this case, it's just, hey, it changed. And yeah, your, your, uh, your operators down the line just know what to do. Yeah, exactly. So you are programming reactively, but then you can do really these things that you were talking about, which are part of my favorite things. So you have the state, right? Which is the, per the person logged in, true? Mm -hmm. So we'll make it this global observable, whether we expose it, expose it globally on the window or through some ES6 import thing. And that user will be an observable that people can subscribe to. And maybe at first it's, uh, it's null, and then all of a sudden we get a user through it and it's defined, right? Yep. So we have a, a global user called, a global observable called user. Well, maybe we want to make a, an observable called user, in, like 
is auth so that we can get a true yeah. or false, whether it's null or a user, right? We don't have yeah. to keep reproducing the not null like uh, stuff. We can just say, right. um, we can just say, or is it is it a boolean? Like we can just and then so what you do is you make a derivative stream, okay? Right. And this is what's beautiful about Azurl is, is you take a higher level stream and then you derive a new stream off of it, or you drive a new stream off of multiple streams. So here's an example. You take the user stream and you say, I want you to now, like user is one stream. Let's shape, make a new stream called is auth. And that's user dot. And you, you do this variable syntax to say, you know, is null or not. Right. And now no one has to recreate that is logged in on logged to anymore. You'll just have another stream that descended from the parent stream. Mm -hmm. And that just puts out a Boolean. And, and, and I, I realize I've dumped it down into this Boolean where people are like, well, that's not very useful. Yeah, but let's take like it up another level, right? So let's say that you have a certain set of components that are only available if they have the admin role. And yes. a certain other set that have the, um, you know, the account owner role. Yep. And so you can set up streams for all those, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And then... And then let's say you add the role to that user, right? So, you know, somehow that role gets added to the user, it gets mm -hmm. updated through a WebSocket, and then that, that user object gets updated and it says they're now an admin. Then that trickles down and all of a sudden those other components know that they've got to show up. Yep. Yeah, totally. Yeah, there's, there's some really simple demos that show how if you code through subscriptions, your code cuts like yeah. in half. And the code that cuts in half isn't the initial code, but it's the follow-up code. And if I could explain that, Chuck, and I want you to correct me if I'm talking out my, the side of my mouth here. But I want you to imagine you have like a UI that has like three or four buttons that get clicked in an input field, okay? Mm -hmm. And when any of those things change or the input gets typed in, it's gonna go refetch new data, right? This could be a list of Donuts of superheroes of properties to real estate. It could be a list of anything. Podcasts that Chuck tells that are great, right? And I, I like donuts at pieces of real estate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, My so, real estate. Yeah, Chuck's real estate. So when you code without like an observable subscription pattern, when someone clicks one of those buttons, you have to say, "All right, go set some value that's a response to the button click." And then you also have to code and say, now go refetch the data. Right. You know and maybe like two or three things you also have to set because that button clicked affected two or three other things, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're, when you're coding with observables or when you're being reactive, you have a stream that knows how to fetch the data based off of all the variables. Right. And when you click the button or type in the input, all you have to do is set that new value into the observable. Yep. And the whole stream refires. So you're cutting down the amount of code it takes to maintain your component because the stream is perfect. And all you have to do as a response to user interaction is set new data into the stream and let the stream, let the stream redirect. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And the thing that I see that's really powerful about this and all the code that you now don't have to write yeah. is that I see people write components that connect to some service library that goes and hits the API, right? Instead of the observable doing it. Yes. And so then what happens is, okay, I've got six components that I'll have to update and they all go hit the same service. They all go make the same request. They all get the same data back and I've got to maintain it in six different places. Yeah. Or even, even if I, I manage to keep it to one request, I've got to orchestrate all that updating myself. Yeah. And I want to kill myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if well, I miss like one, if I miss yeah. one, right, writing it initially, you know what? I, I run through and it all works. But maintaining it, you know, when I have to update it, it's real easy to miss one and not see it. Yeah, now I need QA to spend the next two months finding all my 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 straggler bugs that I created, right? Yep, so, yeah, all across these bugs, I don't write exactly. Bugs. No, 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 exactly. Um, you create uh, hidden features, so um, that's right. Unexpected results. Yeah, that's my specialty. Yeah, yeah. Um, that would be a good podcast, by the way. <laughs> 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 Think about it. That'd be funny. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of the deal here with the journals. It, it, it shrinks the amount of code that you write. And the last time I experienced this massive of like a code shrinking mm -hmm. was when I went from 
jQuery and Backbone to AngularJS back in 2013. I remember converting some jQuery code and Backbone code to AngularJS and being able to delete like 70% of the code. Yeah. And I remember my mind was just like, what? Like, this is crazy. And I've seen some optimizations along the way. Like when you use React over AngularJS, I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is good. Angular over AngularJS, I'm like, yeah, this is good. But I've never experienced such a massive reduction as I did back then right. until I found RxJS. It's just like, wow, I am reducing so much code that I'm writing. Yeah. So yeah, like, so naturally, Chuck, I'm like, hey, I, and, and, and I live a charmed life, I'm not gonna lie. And I've, I've had the chance to meet the people that write RxJS. Yeah. And aside from them being phenomenally like nice and giving people, um, they're really passionate about what they do. And I was like, hey, let's do a, let's do a conference around this. Let's go do it in Vegas, one of the funnest cities in the States. And let's invite the entire RxJS core team and a couple other rock stars from the community. You know, yeah. we've got Jay Phelps who built Redux Observable, which is a way to integrate uh -huh. RxJS with Redux and React. And then you've got um, Mike Ryan, who he works on Enjoy. Angular's kind of NGX, yeah. which is Angular's Redux. And it integrates with RxJS. And um, you've got you know, the core team, you've got Tracy coming, you've got Ben coming, the guy who created this all, Mike Padwazaki. And when I say create, it's a little disingenuous to the actual creators of Reactive. What, what am I, did I say Mike Padwazaki? It's Matt, sorry. Matt, Matt's what, one of my JS heroes. Yeah, so what Matt did was- Dude is awesome. Yeah, he's super cool. And he's super Matt, humble too, which is- yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matt, he took Reactive and brought it to JavaScript. That was Matt's yeah. contribution. Matt didn't, and he doesn't like to claim, he'll, he'll never claim he created this thing, but he was the original porter of it to JavaScript. Yeah. And now that torch has largely, not totally, but largely been passed on to Ben Lesh. Yep. And I think he kind of self nominated for that. I don't think that someone said, Oi, young man. Would you like to carry the torch? You know, I think he just was like, I love this. I'm going to do this in my after hours. Yeah, I, I see a lot of uh, a lot of open source projects go that way where, yes, the initial creator works on it. And, you know, they make steady progress and then somebody else comes in and they, you know, they just really come in and, and push the project forward in a big way and kind of become the de facto maintainer. And I know that Matt had a few other projects that he was working on at the same time. And so it, it kind of worked out. I don't, think, I don't think there was ever an official passing of the, you know. Of the torch, yeah. Of the torch. I think at some point they just kind of looked at each other and said, oh, it looks like you're doing it now. Yeah, I think that's largely what did happen. Um, so, but anyway, Ben, if you don't know Ben, next time you see him, just go say hi. Um, Ben's giving me good advice on like half a dozen things that are really important to me. Like not just like passive things that I that are kind of important. Ben's given great advice on several things that I, that really matter to me. So I appreciate Ben on a lot of levels. And one of them is how hard he works thanklessly on RxJS. And yeah. um, he's kind of in the hero level, like along with like John David Dalton and this these crazy people who put in so many hours into making something that hundreds of thousands of us love, you know? And so, yep. yeah, I, I, uh, you know, John Resig level type stuff. Right. And so, yeah, I'm a big fan of, uh, of Ben. So, so yeah, uh, I, I, I want everyone in the community to come to Vegas. It's on September 5th and 6th. We still have tickets. It's going to be super quaint. Mm -hmm. My favorite conferences are, the big party ones where everyone I know is going to be at and we just sit there and play D&D &D and, we, you know, we goof around until 2 a.m. and then go watch talks the next morning. Or the uber, uber quaint ones. Yeah. It's like me and maybe a hundred other people. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And this RxJS Live is going to be crazy quaint. Um, and it's going to be in a perfect destination for that kind of quaint interaction, right? So, uh, yeah, we're shooting in downtown Las Vegas, close to Mandalay Bay. Um, it's going to be really, really fun. I think you should get your tickets and yep. come. Now, one thing that I want to throw in here, because you're talking about all the people who are coming, and these are definitely the right people. Yeah. But 
the reason that I think people should come, it's not just because of the people. It's because of what these people have to offer. And specifically what it is, is, you know, we've kind of given you some basic ideas of what observables can do, right? And I haven't seen all the patterns, right? I haven't seen all the things that you can come up with to do with observables. And they're so powerful and so versatile that I know that just showing up and listening to the talks, listening to the speakers, you know, uh, sitting down at lunch and kind of uh, cornering Ben Lesh and making him uncomfortable with how close I'm sitting to him and then asking him all my uh, crazy questions. Mm-hmm. He's probably seen some stuff and he's probably had to help some people with some stuff. And so he'll probably yeah. look at a, a problem that I have and go, actually, it solves really elegantly with these couple of things from RxJS. And so then yeah. instead of me going and engineering a giant solution for it, I get three quarters of the way there with a solution out of RxJS. Yeah. And it really is that powerful. I've seen a few things where I was like, I would have never thought to do that. And I would have written a thousand lines of code to solve it. Yeah. I think, uh, I feel like that about a lot of RxJS, like all the operators, like there's a hundred operators. And at first you're like, someone please stab me in the eye because there's too many operators. But then you're like, actually each one plays, yep. they make it really simple to do these complex things, especially with how quickly you can compose them. But like at our exist, there's gonna be things like I I would guess Ben Ben opened up to me. We I was playing DD last night and, we, and I, he was chatting me and he was like, dude, I'm creating an animations library in our exit. Yes. And he's like, try this. And he sent me a like a stack blitz with with a demo. Mm-hmm. And it had like some very D3 like animations based on our X. I was like, wow, that, that's crazy reusable. Yeah. What have you done? So I don't know. I'm excited for a lot of reasons. I think RX GS Live is going to be, I think there's going to be a lot of leaders come out of that conference. I'm not going to lie. Um, I've had a pretty charmed career. And I think that this is the kind of conference where people go, you make the kind of contacts that help you learn and become the next leader, but you also learn the things from those people while you're there that let you go back home and gain a solid mastery of a very complex and transformative topic. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, speaking to the, the leader, the leadership part, it's interesting how many of the people who wind up being leaders of different programming communities or seem to be out in front or wind up out in front. Yeah. They go to the first edition of a conference for a transformative technology and then they're part of that small group that kind of pushes it forward from then on. Yeah. I mean, that's certainly happened. That's happened with me at least once, right? Yep. So, yeah, um, it's happened with you. I know that we have a handful of friends that's happened with them. So, um, oh, yeah. It is good to do these first gen conferences. And uh, I got to be honest, if you're going to go to a conference, Vegas is about as cool as it's going to get. So, yeah, we should pull something together and go see a magic show or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's going to be a lot of that. I mean, we're staying at Mandalay Bay, so there's going to be tons of people to hang out with all night long. So, yeah. So, anyway, so that's that, yeah. Chuck. I don't know if I've answered enough questions, but uh, I love observables. Yeah, and I just wanted to give people an idea. It's like, look, this is where we're headed. This is the opportunity to figure it out. And so that's why I'm pulling together this bonus episode because it's like, you know, it, I, I think I think there's a major payoff here. So. Yeah. I think we are headed this direction. Like if you had to say, Hey, in, in 10 years, will everyone use observables? I'd say yes. And whatever, is everyone going to use TypeScript? I'd be like, yes. And those are the only two, like, those are the only two things I would feel confident about. I wouldn't feel confident necessarily about any of the frameworks or even necessarily one of the most powerful things on the web, which is Webpack. I, I don't even know where that will be, but I do feel confident about observables. Well, and, the same, Even if it's not the same way I feel confident about promises, like they will probably be here too, you know? Yeah. But even if observables is not the way in 10 years, whatever it's going to be is going to be, it, it, this is going to be a stepping stone to whatever that is. Just like promises was kind of a stepping stone to really kind of getting what observables could do for you. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. Hey, anyone listen to this show? What if we throw out a discount code for everyone listening to your show? Should we do that? I love that. You don't have to, but I love that. Let's do it. One second. Let me get into the admin real quick and we'll make a code. What, should, what do you want your code to be, Chuck? Um, Chuck for life? Chuck for life. I love it. Okay. Let's do a discount code. Chuck for life. 
Let the number four, not the letter four. So when you when you send out your episode, you're gonna to want to put that on the website. So we'll say Chuck for life, and and we'll do a hundred dollars off for everybody who's listening. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. Let's do a hundred of those tickets, and uh, yeah, clicking save right now. So yeah, I, I appreciate you uh, you helping get this going. So yeah, that, that's the least we can do. Chuck for life, it's live, man. Yeah. Well, I don't go out and promote anything that I don't think is going to pay off for people. So, you know, yeah. you're telling me thanks, but I feel like I'm doing everybody a favor. So, yeah, that's good that you feel like that. I, I feel the same way. Like it's, it's, you know, conference organizers take on crazy amount of risk to do an event, but I, I mean, I feel like I owe it to the community. This is, this is a fantastic technology. So yep. my company hero devs were, we're proud to sponsor it. And, um, I know that this dot is also sponsoring it. Thinkstrio is sponsoring it um, in some capacity. Dev Chat TV will be sponsoring it. So, yep. so yeah, we're I'm I'm super super pleased uh, with what's going on here. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely excited to be a part of this. So. Yep. Well, cool, man. Yep. Well, we'll see you all there. Do you want to give the dates? I don't think we gave the dates. Yeah. So it's September fifth and sixth. Get your ticket today. You know you don't want the you don't want the uh, prices. To, you don't want the tickets to disappear, but you also don't want the, the, the airline tickets to go up too much. We don't have a dedicated hotel, but all the speakers and I, we will be staying at the Mandalay Bay. And so um, the hotel for Wednesday, Thursday night is pretty cheap. So, I mean, relatively, like it's under $100 and it's a yeah. nice hotel. So I figured it was great. Um, it's a real nice hotel. It's right on the strip. It's down on the, it's on the south end of the strip. It's yes, on it one is. End. It's on one of the ends of the strip. Yeah, it's on the south end. And then... Um, and there's plenty to do down there. So. Yeah, for like conference food, we're not going to have like cheesy food in a box. We're just going to... We're in a food court. We're in a mall. So it's not a necessarily a food court, but we're surrounded by restaurants. So we're just going to send everyone out with some gift cards and say, hey, go grab lunch, wherever you want. You don't have to eat our stale sandwich in a box type thing that a lot of conferences will do. Um, so yeah, plan on that. And... Uh, uh, yeah. If you have any questions, like if anyone wants some RxJS mentoring, I'm on Twitter. I'm at Aaron Frost. Aaron is double A R O N. And then also, um, I'd love to see you at the conference as well. If you have any, if you want to kind of level up. So yeah. Yeah, and I will probably probably be leading food expeditions because I stay in Vegas probably four or five times a year anymore. Yeah. So I know where to go. A lot of uh, at least two of the conferences I go to are on that end of the strip. Right there, Perfect. you know, Tropicana, New York, New York. Perfect. Um, so yeah, uh, MGM Grand, and there's some terrific food right over there. So perfect. That's awesome. That's exactly what we need. Cool. All right. Thanks, Chuck. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, when you come down, you know, come get a JavaScript Jabber sticker, and you know, say hello. Yep. And yeah, we'll see you there. Peace. Peace. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more.